What's going on guys? So in today's video, it's gonna be kind of interesting. So as you can see, uh, my father got a new tow vehicle. He was using the Class B Sprinter van to tow around their Flagstaff E-Pro, which is essentially like a, a suite, a master bedroom suite that they can tow around with them with that van. And it's worked out really well for them. But occasionally they don't wanna to have to take the Class B out to tow a travel trailer. So they got rid of uh, a Lexus that they had. It was actually a Lexus SC430, an old, old edition one. It was really, really cool, convertible. It, it Very, very cool looking classy car, but they weren't using it that much. So so they opted to get a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit Edition. This thing is super cool, super loaded out, air suspension. Um, it's about as loaded as you can get one of these things. Four wheel drive with the Hemi 5.7 liter V8 in it. So that's really nice as well. And apparently it gets pretty good fuel economy also. But now they have the capability of not having to use a Sprinter van if they just want to go on a quick trip or if they want to follow us out, they can take their RV out to a campsite, leave it there and have a really comfortable, nice and capable vehicle to go explore the sites and, and just to, as a runaround vehicle, which is really nice. Plus, it gives them the flexibility of having an SUV in the family now so they can go to Lowe's, go to you know the store, pick things up and have the extra space and the rear seat room, which is something the Lexus lacked severely. Anyways, what we're going to do today is going to be something that is now really needed, and that is to readjust the re-steady flex weight distribution hitch that we had dialed into the Nissan Frontier he had uh, when towing the Flagstaff. So we're going to make the right adjustments that are needed to make it work with the Jeep Grand Cherokee he now has, um, just to make sure that the front end and the back end are spaced properly. Because right now you really can't tell, but the front is sitting up a couple inches higher than the back. Uh, hopefully it'll be a quick change, uh, a quick modification, and, uh, and we'll be able to get this thing fixed and dialed in where it needs to be. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't think this travel trailer needs much of an introduction. This is my father's Flagstaff E-Pro. This thing is super compact, super lightweight, but even something this compact is, it's kind of interesting how it still makes a tow vehicle look kind of small, mainly because of that ground clearance you see and you know, travel trailers in general, even small ones are relatively tall and relatively wide. And even small ones tend to be a little longer than a lot of people think. So if you see this thing on a dealership lot, you know, oftentimes you're like, man, that thing looks super tiny until you get it hitched up behind your tow vehicle and you find out it's a lot bigger than you actually first thought. Okay, taking a look at the sticker on the side here, you'll see that this E-Pro has a gross vehicle weight rating of only 3,866 pounds. This thing is super, super lightweight. So even though when hitched up to his Jeep, it looks like it's a relatively large compact travel trailer, it's actually very small and it has a very, very low overall weight to it, 3,866 pounds. Has a single 3,500 pound axle on it and it has a cargo capacity of 1,289 pounds, which is really ideal for something this size. All right, so now let's talk about the Jeep. So their Jeep Grand Cherokee is a 2020 model. Again, they haven't really made any changes to the exterior appearance of this, even for 2023. So they do have a version of this called the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, which does have a different look to it. It looks more like the Grand Wagoneer, and it is a third row SUV, whereas this is a two row SUV. So the towing capacity of this is actually 6,200 pounds, and that's partially benefited by the fact that it does have that big Hemi V8 inside of it. And the payload capacity on this is 1,050 pounds which means whenever they load it up, people supplies everything inside of the vehicle plus whatever they have on the back needs to be less than that 1,050 pounds or just not go over it. And if this had been a lower trim Jeep, then it would have probably had significantly higher payload, but because it has air suspension, four wheel drive, all the luxury amenities inside of it, that all counts against its payload capacity. That said though, the tongue weight on the trailer last time we filmed it when we were setting up the weight distribution hitch was at 460 pounds. So it's using less than the available cargo capacity. So that leaves them roughly 600 pounds for both of them, as well as anything that they bring with them, which is a pretty good number actually. So they're well above the weight of the trailer in terms of towing capacity, and they're right where they need to be in terms of payload capacity for the weight of the trailer, the accessories, and the people in the vehicle. Anyways, we do have to make a slight adjustment. Last time you saw this, we had configured this weight distribution hitch for the Nissan Frontier that, uh, that he was hooking up to. Well, he's not gonna be using that to tow this anymore. We are going to make sure that everything is nice and level. So we're gonna have to remove a washer from the Reese uh, weight distribution hitch right here, just so we can bring the front of the trailer down a little bit, because right now it is a little nose high. 
So this is the Reese Steady Flex weight distribution hitch. What is different about this than many others on the market is this one actually uses an automotive grade brake pad right here for your friction, where most of them simply use the L bracket rubbing up against the spring bar as your friction. You also get friction right here and you can see that friction by way of the, the metal actually rubbing. So yeah, you have four points of friction here. Two of those points are utilizing automotive grade brake pads. Now, what we had to do here was a little more than what we thought because even though the, the unloaded height of the Jeep and the Frontier are very close, once you load it down, you realize that the Jeep sags a little bit more lower. It drops a little bit more. Plus he has air suspension on the Jeep, which is gonna try to level it out once he turns it on, but he has some control over the height with the air suspension. But we had to switch the, the shank around from the up position or the rise position to the drop position. And in the rise position, this hitch head right here sat up right about here. And that's where it was dialed into the Nissan Frontier. Now that it's in the drop position, we actually had to bring it way down to here so we can get the right amount of weight distribution, but not just weight distribution, but weight on these L brackets to give us the friction we need for sway control. We removed all of the washers. You can see down in here, there's no more washers. Those washers pivot this head forward so it applies more downward pressure with these bars hence giving you more weight distribution. So we removed all the washers. We still have a good amount of friction here. Weight distribution isn't so much the issue with this setup, given the fact that we have the payload capacity to be able to handle the, the 450 pounds worth of tongue weight that'll be resting on it. So everything is dialed in really well. The front of the trailer is actually sitting right at an inch lower than the back. But if you look at it from here, you'll see that it's pretty much level. And if we want weight transitioning from the trailer, we definitely want it leaning more towards the vehicle than away from the vehicle. So having an inch lower in the front really isn't bad at all for this setup. We are getting the sway control we need. We're getting a little bit of weight distribution, which is also really good. And both the trailer and the uh, tow vehicle are sitting very level. So this is really cool. We just have to go back now and we have to tighten up the bolts. But the reason why I wanted to make this its own video is oftentimes people have this misconception of how weight distribution actually works. And what we're doing here is creating a bowing effect in the center here, where we're taking the frame of the Jeep and the frame of the RV, we're connecting the two together and with this pivoting down and putting weight right here, it's creating this arch effect like this, kind of like a bow. And that's how you get weight distribution. So it's really important to do whatever it takes to dial in your weight distribution setup as, as accurately as possible. And another thing here that you wanna see is how this bar is running parallel to the frame of the trailer running almost perfectly parallel, which means the spring bar is sitting pretty much completely flat against that brake material. And that's really important when you're doing sway control because if it's not sitting flat against that material and it's, it's angled up or down, you're not gonna get nearly the sway control you should be getting. So by having it sitting flush here, and having that downward pressure, that's what creates the friction that gives you sway control and prevents the trailer and the tow vehicle from pivoting as easily. Because the whole point of this type of weight distribution is to make it more difficult for the trailer and the tow vehicle to pivot. Basically have this hinge point right here where it moves. It keeps everything a little bit more rigid and when wind hits it, it's far less likely that the trailer and the tow vehicle are gonna have this area right here that's moving back and forth and that's how you essentially limit or help prevent sway. Okay, so we have completed the entire process. Everything has been removed from underneath. We have it dialed in, everything's been tightened up to spec. And now we have a setup that looks pretty much perfectly level. Very cool. Anyways, guys, I will put a link in the description of this video if the Re-Steady Flex is a weight distribution hitch that you'd like to take a look at. Folks over at eTrailer provided it for the last video for review and evaluation, my official channel sponsor, so definitely check out eTrailer.com. Very cool setup, looks really nice. And now it gives them the flexibility of taking the RV out with the Jeep, leaving the RV at the RV park, and having a runaround vehicle to go explore the sites, especially a very capable off-road runaround vehicle. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.